Good evening, everyone. Next Generation Weather Forecast is Joe Shock here, taking a look here at what's going to be a major uh, a storm for the uh, northeast and part of the United States Sunday night into Monday. And here is uh, what's going to become a uh, looks like tropical storm Philippe uh, ton uh, tonight into tomorrow. A uh, tropical storm uh, warnings out for Cuba and the um, uh, Bahamas and watches uh, tropical storm uh, watches here. Uh, so you can see uh, this is a uh, minimum uh, tropical storm, essentially almost. I mean, 40 mile an hour winds. It's potential tropical cyclone number 18. But here's the track. You can see they discontinued the track uh, past uh, Sunday because this is when it will become part of the main low to some degree. We'll take a look at that because some guidance keeps it out. And some guidance, I think, looks like it brings it in. So it's going to be interesting to see if this can uh, get closer in and get more involved. Uh, than what some of the modeling suggests. So here's the um, GFS Ensemble track here. Uh, let me uh, find uh, the mouse. Hold on. Uh, here is where it has um, uh, the potential tropical cyclone. You can see now there's two tracks here. Let me try to highlight these so it's a little bit easier for you to see here. Let me find my pen here because this is I got lost trying to find these myself because uh, there's so many of them going on here. Let me find a good color. Let's try yellow. See how this works out. Uh, so you can see here are the uh, GFS ensembles for the uh, for the tropical cyclone, uh, if you will. Here, okay. Now let me switch over to another color because the main event for the nor'easter is gonna be coming through here. I don't know if you can uh, make it out, but you can see the tracks coming up through here, Tennessee, and then getting off the coast, then coming up into New England like that and you can see there are a couple members down here it looks like that do bring Philippe into the mix as well but the main low will be coming out of the um, south, uh, southeastern I guess central you know North Carolina South Carolina coast the non-tropical low will be coming out developing and then coming up intensifying doing so you can see uh, the pressure here 960 to 979 indicated by the red dots there so uh, this is going to intensify as a non-tropical cyclone coming up and then again will Philippe get involved and how much so and maybe could Philippe get a little stronger than what's currently forecasted that will be interesting as well here's the high-res Canadian uh, uh, Canadian uh, high-res Canadian here and then we'll look at the high-res Nam as well uh, here's uh, tomorrow night you could see um, pretty close uh, looks like maybe even a landfall in South Florida or the Florida Keys Sunday morning uh, looks like uh, 991 it has it here. Um, uh, further on the northwestern side of the National Hurricane Center track. And then Sunday afternoon uh, has Philippe here. And obviously here comes the other low. Let me see if you can see it back here in the other image. Uh, you can see the other piece of energy coming through across with the big trough that's digging in. And then it looks like by uh, Sunday afternoon that if Philippe is in this uh, location... It will be more more so interacting here and phasing with the other non-tropical low coming off the coast. But let me tell you, we're going to look at the SSTs. This water is uh, 80 degrees in here, so I mean, this could really take off if Philippe is stronger. Imagine Philippe is stronger coming through the next 48 hours. We end up with a high-end tropical storm and, God forbid, a hurricane off the southeast coast... Let's say we have a 75 mile an hour hurricane here. This thing comes through. These things phase together. They come up. It's going to be one heck of a show. But I don't think Philippe will get that strong. I think it maxes out at 45 miles an hour. And then stays out. Closer to where the uh, European and the GFS ensembles have the tracks for it. But anything could change. It's a very, very volatile situation uh, when you're interacting with something like this coming through with such a big trough digging in and here is our 48 again the tropical cyclone sitting right about here and you can see the main phasing of the jet here uh, bringing this thing up and this jet will continue to intensify as well uh, getting close to 165 knots on some of the models uh, Sunday night so this will be a very very powerful storm and anytime you have a storm and a jet stream configuration like this it pulls air out of the storm which strengthens it that goes for non-tropical systems and it goes for tropical systems so a lot of divergence aloft, you know, pulling air out of both of these things and how the interaction will occur is going to be very, very interesting. And even though we're only out 48 hours, you know, there's a very good agreement that this will be occurring. 
but there's lower confidence on what the tropical entity will look like by that time. And again, here's that warm water. You can see all this, uh, this uh, blue line here, let me find it, is the 80 degree line. So you can see there's plenty of warm water for Philippe to take advantage of. And you can see this warm water, uh, the anomalies here are 2, 3C above normal. Uh, this tropical cyclone very well will like, I, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, could it phase in and just come up all at once or will the main thing come up and then follow it out? But uh, tropical cyclones like to follow the warmest water relative to normal. So if you look at where the warmest water is relative to normal, it's right along the coast where the main low will be coming up anyway. I mean, look at that. Ooh, 80 degree water. Uh, east of New England in late October, that's off the chain. Uh, that's over 7C above normal and through there. But again, you see the point is that this could uh, this could uh, rapidly intensify. Uh, e I mean, Philippe could rapidly intensify, which could intensify our friend, no the non-tropical system further along, or Philippe stays out weak and then the main low intensifies. And even again, the main low, the non-tropical low, could intensify quicker going over this warm water. So... A lot, a lot of fun and games next two, two and a half days to watch. Now, here's the NAM. You can see here, uh, Philippe, uh, further south and east here on the NAM. Uh, you can see what happens here by Monday, uh, late Sunday night. Uh, the phase is not as well uh, together. Uh, Philippe is down here, uh, heading out towards Bermuda. And you don't have all this phase together either, so it's a little bit late on the phasing. By Monday afternoon... Here is Philippe, maybe even a high end tropical storm, and there's Bermuda. Here is um, another low, and here's another low, and it looks like the NAM doesn't really phase all of this together until late Monday afternoon and Monday evening. But again, the NAM has been struggling. It's like every other run continues to flip around with the phasing of this, but all of the runs of the NAM, the last like six that I've seen, have kept Philippe completely out of the picture, but still implying some heavier rain here up in New England. But Philippe has never been involved in the phasing process. It's just these upper lows here, these lows that will phase together is what the NAM is trying to figure out. But is it possible that tonight or tomorrow that the NAM phases Philippe in too? Absolutely. We just don't know yet. Still a little bit too far out to say. Now here's the high-res NAM. You can see uh, Philippe uh, similar to the NAM. And you can see the phasing that goes on here a little bit. Looks like slightly a little bit faster with the phasing, but keeping again Philippe. Uh, for the main part, out the sea here, closer, you know, here's Bermuda, but, you know, not where the um, high-res Canadian has, you know, coming in. And the um, Canadian Global, actually, by the way, I forgot to put that on here. The Canadian Global, the the GM, uh, the CMC, uh, does phase Philippe in off the um, uh, east coast, then pull it back. So, uh, again, some vulnerability there with that. But you can see, uh, even with Philippe being... Uh, uh, not completely, you know, phased in here. You can see the strong winds with the lows that will be developing and intensifying. You can see uh, winds just off the ground at 900 millibars, uh, 80, 75, 85 knots. Here. So there will be damaging winds in eastern New England with power loss. The thing is, will we be talking 50 to 70 mile an hour winds, or will we be talking winds closer to maybe even 100 if the tropical entity can get involved and maybe even a threat for even more heavier rain than what's currently being seen? But again, one to three, if not four inches of rain. Not out of the question for parts of southern New England with even heavier amounts of rain in western New York State, maybe closer to 6 or 7 on the back side of this low. But let me tell you, it is one heck of a situation and one situation that needs to be watched closely. That's it for now and thank you for watching.